Namaste. So it's nice and bright in here with all the lights, but outside it's gray and dank and <laughs> we're uh, having monsoon rains. So the rain is just gradually drizzling since early morning and all day now. So it's cool, everything's very quiet. Barometric pressure is low. Even the birds are silent. And it's the kind of a day that makes you get a little nostalgic, you know? Especially at my age. <laughs> but really anybody. It's a kind of a lo-fi day, you know? Where you just want to cuddle in bed with your kitty cat. <laughs> Which I'm going to do after I finish this video. But anyway, it got me thinking about the 60s and early 70s, you know, and how it, it, nowadays you can't turn on the news on the TV or the internet without being bombarded with make America great again, right? And hopefully that nightmare is almost over. But for the last four years, it's been constant like this rain. <laughs> but wait a minute. If America isn't great, when did it become not great? When did it lose its greatness? And how did it lose its greatness? And I know, because I was there. See, there was this thing called the hippie movement. And there was this thing called LSD. And basically LSD gave you instant access to Brahman. Some other drugs too, like mescaline. N not so much psilocybin. Psilocybin is more mental, like dream consciousness, expanded dream consciousness. But LSD goes right straight to Brahman. It's the express. Huh? And in the late 60s, like when I got to hate Ashbury, it was 1967. And it was the summer of love. And of course, I was in a band. <laughs> I was in several bands, actually. And living in San Francisco, and later on in Marin County, out in the country. Well, then it was country. Now it's Yuppieville. But then it was beautiful country, a place called Forest Knolls, and the town right next to it, Lagunitas. And let me tell you, this was like rock star loca. Everybody and anybody who was anybody in the rock scene lived in Marin, you know. Uh, at least after a certain point, maybe about 1968. And uh, before that, they were in San Francisco. The Haight-Ashbury was where it was all happening. Everybody was tripping a lot. I mean, everybody I knew, anyway. <laughs> and the, the people that I was crashing with in a kind of a group house, uh, the, the head guy there, the head honcho, was a dealer. He used us, you know, as guinea pigs to check out his new stuff, right? So we got to sample all kinds of drugs. Oh, my God. And, of course, he was tight with other people, in, important people in the scene, like the Grateful Dead. And so, you know, being a musician, he said, come on, let's go meet the Grateful Dead. So we went down to their place in uh, Haight-Ashbury. And it happened to be just down the street from the Hare Krishna Temple. I mean, literally, Stanyan Street. It just, they were on one side, the temple was on the other side, about two blocks down. So this also meant that I started getting involved in the temple. There was very little crossover between the two scenes. It was because I had a long-standing interest in Vedic spirituality. But anyway, 
So everybody was taking lots of acid and other things. And the thing about acid is it gives you a direct pipe to Brahman, but it doesn't teach you anything about it except, you know, by experience. So what brought this all on was I was watching a documentary about the Grateful Dead and how so many of those people in that scene died young. And they were playing this song by Jerry Garcia, Nothing's Gonna Bring Him Back. Huh? When somebody leaves this world, nothing can bring them back. They're gone. Huh? So depending on the level of their realization, determines where they go in the next life. You know, we've been over that a bunch of times, how that works. But something happened. After this, everybody moved to Marin, including me. And again, I was just down the road from the Grateful Dead's uh, ranch and crashing with a bunch of hippies, you know, and that I was in a band with and so on. You know, 1969, what can I tell you? But by 1971, the whole scene changed. Instead of acid and pot, it started to be cocaine and meth. And meth got really big. It destroyed a lot of people's lives. Killed them, really. Speed kills, was the saying. Everybody knew it. But people did it anyway if they couldn't get any acid, which became increasingly the case as the war on drugs started up. Terrible, terrible waste. So let me put it in, in historical perspective. The CIA got involved, and they wanted to make money from the drug scene because, you know, they're experts at underground movements, right? They sponsored and directed a whole line of hostile uh, coups in South America and other places where democratic leaders that had an inclination towards socialism were violently overthrown and which led to dictatorships in Chile, Argentina, and places like that. So the, the CIA was really good at that. And of course, they had already their tentacles wrapped around the cocaine thing. But they could never figure out how to make money from LSD. And besides, it was socially very dangerous because too many people were getting enlightened. <laughs> too many people were getting spiritual visions. And they didn't like that. So they had to shut down LSD, even though in the beginning in the MK Ultra program, they sponsored a bunch of LSD research. They decided it was too dangerous. They had to stop it, so they did. What they did was they substituted methadrine. Meth became very cheap and easy to get, same with cocaine. So people were taking this crap, which messes you up, and shortens your life and drinking instead of taking acid and going into spontaneous meditation and stuff like this. So then on the economic side, in 1972, Nixon took the USA off the gold standard. And it's very interesting, if you look at the charts, up to 1972, the cost of living and the average income were tracking each other very closely. But after 1972, as soon as the gold standard, as soon as we went off the gold standard in the US, these two curves diverged. And the cost of living started going up, 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 up. And the, the wage stagnated. Wages, you know, measured in purchasing power. Stagnated. But the prices kept going up until now. It's like more than like 2,500% what it was in 1972. So there's no wonder people can't afford homes. 
it's no wonder people are living on the street, homeless. All the money is going into the corporations. The corporations have so much cash, they have to stash it offshore. So you want to know what, why America isn't great anymore? <laughs> See, in the history of civilizations, there's a peak. And when that peak moment is reached, then enlightenment is easily available to everyone. But most people don't take it. Most people use the drugs and things for sense gratification and ego gratification. And then they start doing crazy things that destroy their life and destroy the, the, the society. So this is what happened. In those days, that was when the uh, war on drugs started. That's also when the currency went off the gold standard. And that's when America didn't, was not great anymore. You see, we all knew when we were hippies, without reading any books, without, without studying anything, we knew that this civilization based on mechanical, mechanistic science was destroying the planet. We knew because the Native Americans told us. They knew and they had known for a long time what the end game was going to be. So now we're into it. Uh, we're starting to see the effects of climate change. change. And we are past the tipping point. Mm -hmm. Even if we stop burning fossil fuels tomorrow, it's going to take like hundreds if not thousands of years to bring the earth back to the way it was, let's say, in 1900. It's totally our fault. And the oil company knew it. They knew what they were doing to the planet, but they didn't stop. In fact, they increased the production and sales of their poisonous chemicals. So the very same changes that the U.S. made happen in third world countries is now happening in the U.S. itself. It's turning from a democracy into an autocracy. It's a police state. It's a third world country with widespread poverty. And education and social programs are getting defunded while more and more money is going into police and military and, of course, being sucked out of the society by the corporations. They're selling stuff that nobody needs for premium price. And it's not just technology. It's everything, including rent and food and, and everything. So that's why. You want to know why the U.S. isn't great anymore? And the same goes for most of the developed countries that followed the lead of the U.S. back in the 70s. That they cracked down on the drugs. They, they devalued their currency by taking it off the gold standard. Right? They uh, offended the spiritual teachers who had come from India and drove their movements it actually infiltrated their movements, their organizations, and made them ineffective at spreading the knowledge that they had, they had been given. And they the, made the hippies into a counterculture. Huh? The hippies didn't use the word counterculture, the media did. And this was a media program, a disinformation program, to make the hippies look bad. And then they were, their actual uh, good medicines were substituted with poison that drove them down and into a subhuman state. So now we have uh, a, a dictatorial presidency. Huh? We have meth everywhere and opioids everywhere. We have uh, rap music instead of interesting jazz and rock and roll. Huh? The Native Americans are still in a state of terrible oppression. The same with anybody who's not white and, and European, of European descent. 
And the whole thing has really turned a corner. It's now definitely on the way down. Most, most uh, macroeconomic and political analysts agree that the U.S. is on the downside of its curve. And that within a few years, China is going to be stronger economically, militarily, and probably socially, too. But they, they're going to have their own problems. Don't worry about that. But the point is, you can't get it back. Once a society passes that peak, once they turn that corner towards oligarchy and uh, dictatorship and oppression, you can't go back. You can't turn back the clock. You can't put the cat back in the bag. It's gone, and it's not coming back. Just like those people who died so young, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. I mean, that whole part of my life is kind of a blur, you know? <laughs> but I survived it. And the reason I survived it is because I wasn't important to anybody. I was just another hippie kid on the street. And I got introduced to my spiritual master, my Adi Guru. And he, he took me out of that, out of that world, actually. And since then, I've been living in a different state of consciousness. And that has made all the difference. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.